What was the weirdest black market in your school? Mountain Dew and Pepsi had a contest where college names were printed on the inside of the bottle caps. If that school won the NCAA March Madness tournament, you could send it in for the jersey of your choice from any school. Suddenly, a black market for caps with blue chip schools was born. I remember selling a Duke cap for $10, then turning around and buying 10 drinks from the vending machine. This one girl forged apology letters if you brought her something one of your parents wrote. I never used her services myself, but we were, and still are, good friends. And I gotta say, she's talented as heck. I literally can't tell which one is mine after she copied something I wrote, including signature. It's baffling. She's the kind of person DiCaprio would approach if he needs a chapa shifter in a dream heist. Our middle school tried to start a reward program. It turned out to be a fail of epic proportion. Wolf Bucks, names after our mascot. They were mini sized dollars color coded by value. Green was $1, red was $5, blue was $10, and a gold Wolf Buck, only accessible to the principal and assistant principal $50. Now the school bought erasers, pencil, notebooks. You could only buy with Wolf Bucks one pencil, one Wolf Buck. First failure, it was easy to copy, so kids started mass copying them. Ok school got smart and said only accepting Wolf Bucks with your name and have your teacher's signature. Second failure, kept the same color, so kids were done one legitimately than the forgery started. Third failure, hyperinflation, during pep rallies, the principal started throwing golden Wolf Bucks. Eventually the school stopped resupplying the store. Everyone had hundreds thousands of worthless Wolf Bucks. So they struggled with counterfeiting and hyperinflation. This happened in Los Angeles in the mid 80s. Student bus passes had to be purchased by the 5th day of the month or you were stuck having to pay daily. The date had passed so I found a guy in my high school willing to trade another student's pass which he had stolen. I traded a tangerine and half a pack of cigarettes for a copy of Penthouse. Then I traded that issue with a pizza from the cafeteria for the bus pass. That sounds like the episode of Atlanta where they trade a cell phone for a sword then sword for a dog then went to breed the dog to make money off the pups. Harry Potter books. I went to a religious school where books that had magic or fantasy was banned. Parents of these kids were just as religious so kids couldn't get them from their parents. Mom didn't care and she let me buy a few for some friends and then more kids started requesting them. Charged double for what they were worth and the kids were more than happy to pay. Most popular requests were, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings and Cirque du Freak series. Not all heroes wear capes. Not really a black market but there was a P-tape, VHS days, that used to do the rounds. There was a booking system and everything. You couldn't have it for more than two days. A booking system. This wasn't a weird one but a genius one for a tween. A girl set up a little business out of a box of stationery, writing forged letters from parents. She had all different paper, pens and pencils of every kind, and could write in convincingly accurate tone for the content of the notes depending on which kid they were for. She used different styles of handwriting and different styles of punctuation and language too. She'd even fudge the spelling if she thought the kid's parents weren't great at it. She grew up to be incredibly educated. I look back and see that as her first moment of evil genius. It definitely suggested she would go on to brilliance one day and she did. I am also a master at forgery. I have all the certificates to prove it. One of my friends sold Starburst from his locker. 10 cents for 2. If he liked you, you got 2 from the normal bag. If he didn't like you. You got two from the bag that only had yellows. I kind of like the yellow ones. Diddle paper. It's colored paper with a mouse drawn on it. But everyone collected them. No matter how old. And there were hundreds of different artworks. People had folders with protective covers and depending on the motive and rarity you wanted to trade, you could get three to four others in exchange. It was wild. I just googled it and there are still collectors buying and selling them on the internet. Oh, diddle stationery. One of my aunts had a stuffed mouse from that. In early elementary school we had a market for mud. 
Different groups of kids would claim areas around the school as their mud pit and put their brand of mud in Ziploc bags to be traded with other groups for different bags of mud. We were the clay mud group and I had about 3 kids in the muck scooping it into bags or running to the water fountain to get fresh water to make more mud on dry days. I would be the one to go make the deals with the other groups. We traded a lot with the gravel mud group because clay mud and cement mud are both good for building or some crap. Who knows. It made so much sense at the time. The principal and staff eventually stepped in to end it because all the kids came back to class filthy every day and giant holes littered every field and playground. Comma it made so much sense at the time. I love this. I remember things like this making so much sense as a kid. And as an adult it's just hard to remember why it made sense. But that feeling is still there. I think it's called imagination but I've been paying taxes and a mortgage for too long to be sure. I had a friend that used to bring a bunch of coke cans from home and then sell them for a dollar at lunch. Cheaper than the vending machine prices and so it became like a little business. He eventually saved up enough for a long board. My son does this. I take him to the discount store to bulk buy drinks and sweets. He makes a nice little profit. A teacher at my high school that I refused to rat on would take money from students and buy them lottery tickets scratch offs in exchange for a cut of any prize $50 and up. I think the dude legit made a few thousand dollars off of this just during my senior year, and it made the students love him. My teachers had a legit butt betting pool for how long until we went online at the beginning of the year. Some seniors were allowed in on it and one of them won like $800. Salt, my school canteen doesn't have any salt with chips, or fries to Americans, and people used to sell salt packets. The most expensive offer I could find was 50 pence for a packet or 1 pound for 3. I wouldn't say it was weird, but my friend in high school had like a prepper granddad waiting for Y2K. He literally had crates filled with cartons of F brand cigarettes, so my friend would steal a few cartons, bring them to me, and I'd sell them out of my locker. I'd charge $3 a pack, he'd get a buck and I'd get the other two, or 50 cents for loose cigarettes and we just spilled that down the middle. I only kept like 6 packs in a pencil case, 5 whole and 1 open for the loose ones to sell, in my locker at a time. He'd have the rests in his locker at the other end of school and I'd just go refill as needed between classes or at lunch. One time a teacher called the cops because I was acting suspicious. They pulled me out of class and brought in a drug dog to search my locker. I just sold my last Lucy and pack like 10 minutes before that. The dog didn't find anything but they cops went through everything anyway. When he opened the pencil box, there were little shreds of tobacco inside. He asked what's this and I said well it's a pencil box. I would guess it's probably pencil shavings and he just shrugged and put it back. Went right back to selling cigarettes the next day. Oh. I'd also trade one Lucy for a meal ticket, that's how our lunch system worked, and would also sell the meal tickets for one dollar each and split it with my buddy too. That was smooth on your part with the tobacco pieces in the pencil case. Our elementary school utilized ice cream tickets, you got one if it was your birthday or if you did something that a teacher decided was exemplary, people would pass them around asking for favors down the line. Some kid found the paper used to make the tickets and xeroxed multiple pages of the tickets. He became our kingpin and ruled for a couple years. Bottle caps. I still don't get it but back in primary school, they were collecting bottle caps for some kind of charity. Google it, it's still ongoing around the world. So what happened was everything was going well. The teacher got everyone excited about it and kids were collecting it en masse. Kids would go around raiding for it. From the trash from their school lunches, from their homes even. A teacher got a call from a concerned parent because her kid hijacked all the bottle caps from their kitchen. So that's stage 1 of the weirdness, it's what happened afterwards. Stage 2. Kids started trading with these plastic bottle caps. We would trade pens, homework and even Pokemon cards for bottle caps. Worthless bottle caps. There wasn't even a prize for whoever could collect the most caps. It just became a currency out of nowhere. Let's talk about stage 3 of the madness. Theft. There was no bank of bot caps at our school. There was the donation box and there were your cubbies. Those who didn't want to lug their stash back home every day left it in their cubbies and some kid decided to steal people's caps and from the donation box. The great theft of class 3b. 
but it was probably for the best because overnight the madness subsided. The teacher ended the bottle cap donation. She was sick of the bugs that were gathering and licking up the dried up sugar juices from the caps anyway but mostly horrified at how her little charity drive devolved into a socio-economical experiment. Just like that, the bottle cap market crashed. There was a tree at one end of the playground that had loads of small jade rocks underneath. We had a full mining operation using stones as spades to find them. I think I was 16 when this happened but basically a bunch of guys began printing paper that looked like contracts with a top saying soul contract. They'd come up to some of the younger students and get them to sign the document to sell their soul for eternity and would pay them 2-3 dollars, converting to USD. We had a good laugh when some of the students became worried they actually sold their soul. Mayo kids are so delightfully strange. I can finally answer one. I used to sell bags of sugar and Kool-Aid, like bootleg lick M sticks. Also sold red hot toothpicks I made from cinnamon oil. When I got into high school, my family was one of the first to get a computer. I made a killing from printing out fake report cards. I was quite the entrepreneurial little crap. We did a weird assignment for a month where we ran a society for an hour each day in our classroom. People had little shops they ran from their desks. There were elected positions, laws you could be ticketed for breaking, etc. It was all run on fake money, of course. I got elected chief of police, and handed out tickets for stuff like chewing gum in class. But a combination of laziness and not wanting everyone to hate me caused me to slack off, and I got fired after two weeks. So I opened a shop instead and sold stuff, including gum, which in hindsight makes me like a cop who became a drug dealer. The final week of this rolls around and there's an announcement. At the end, all your money will be tallied up, any debts or taxes you owe subtracted, and any kid who wound up with a positive amount gets a pizza party. Kids who are in the red have to write an assignment on how and why they screwed up. This electrifies the class. Missing out on a pizza party is a big dang deal when you're 10, and well under half the class is currently in the black. Tons of them had taken out big loans in the beginning to set up businesses, and had no way to repay them. Not me though, I'd been receiving a salary as a cop, and after being fired I just used the money I had accumulated to set up shop and had no debts. Few in the class could say that. So I was sitting pretty. Soon I started receiving offers of real money on the playground for some of my fake money. You only needed to be $1 over 0 to win. So I could spare plenty. Made $40 in actual cash. I think I charged $5 for 100 fake dollars. And got 8 people to accept. So I was a corrupt cop who became a drug dealer who became a money launderer. And won. So I definitely learned a lot about how society works. That's awesome. In the 80s, I was a bubblegum dealer in Hebrew school. Nobody could get the flavors I could at my local shops. I charged a 25% markup for import tax. I organized the black market. My school banned Pokemon cards, so I made a new game with paper cards. I was drawing pretty well, so I folded in paper in 9. It made pieces approximately the size of a Pokemon Vard, and created a whole new game out of this. I sold boosters for 10 cents. Spend all my afternoons drawing cards for the school. Teachers eventually heard of it and couldn't ban it because it was still officially still me distributing drawings. And then I started to do replicas of Pokemon cards. Like people had to show me the proof after school that they owned the card. I made a replica, and then the whole Pokemon card trading continued with paper replicas. Then after school people made the real exchanges based on what replicas they exchanged during school. One day my high school decided to stop selling soda because they were trying to pass some sort of audit. The very next day, my friend and I showed up with cases of cold soda in our backpacks, selling them for $0.50 a piece. We were sold out by lunchtime every day for like 2 weeks until they plugged the vending machines back in. In elementary school I would collect parts from ballpoints like springs etc, and then charge for repairing ballpoints my classmates broke. Pretty good idea tbh. There was once a black market at my school for leaves and feathers that were deemed to be cool. People would genuinely pay 2 nzd for a freaking leaf. Looking back at it, it's actually kind of funny. I legit have a framed leaf, 
I found in my driveway last year's, over my head as I read this sitting in my jetted tub right now. It's a rather large leaf that to bug ate out all the in between the veins parts. It's kind of like a leaf skeleton. There was a pretty big market in my elementary school for atomic fireball candies. I remember being out for a couple days, but coming back with a big handful of the fireballs in my backpack, only to find the teachers had implemented a zero tolerance fireball policy. With no context, a zero tolerance fireball policy at a school seems incredibly reasonable. In year 10 I was able to gain access a teacher's account on my school tablet which allowed me to get internet access. I then realized I could open a hotspot which allowed other students to have internet access on their tablets. We weren't allowed to have cell phones. I decided to charge $10 sign week for each student that wanted to subscribe for internet access which I was distributing. I started receiving requests from students not in the radius of the hotspot, thus I figured out a way for users to SSH connect to my school tablet and use it to gain internet access. It was a mess and the network became too slow but I was still getting paid regardless. Best of all, the IT guy knew what I was doing but, he wasn't able to stop it since the school only employed one guy to handle everything thus, he was too busy to do anything about it. Drawings. It started out as a joke. Some kids make beautiful drawings and trade them for other drawings. At one point we decided to give them a value. If a drawing was really pretty, let's say 8 stroke 10, we would number it with 8 and you could trade it for 2 fours. There were kids that would not draw but were chosen to write these drawings. At one point kids would trade snacks for beautiful drawings. This started in my class, and in a couple of days the whole school was doing this. My drawings were okay, but not great. And sadly I never got snacks to bring to school, so I had nothing to trade. So I decided to recruit other kids that were really good and would be their manager so they had more time to draw. I had siblings and other grades, so I would contact them so trade these in their class so there was more ground to collect snacks from. I also bargained with the kids that would be ratings the drawings, promising them a share of the snacks. My clients would share their snacks with me as payment for my services. I still remember those stupid horse flower drawings. Horse girls went nuts over these and would give anything for them. In high school I was the only kid in my year that knew how to download music to your phone. I would make a list of songs people want and would transfer these trough bluetooth. I would charge one cookie for one song. Comma in high school I was the only kid in my year that knew how to download music to your phone. I could imagine one person figuring it out and either create competition or completely bring down the market. Not really black market but kinda. It was in the 90s and most people had a computer but internet was still very slow when you had it. I was a teen and had managed to put my hand on a CD-ROM with 3P videos on it. The kind of CD-ROM that was offered with the magazine you could find on the highest shelf of the newspaper stand. I was starting to know all 3 videos by heart so I decided to lend it to a friend and then I kinda forgot about it. A few days later I noticed during the class that another unrelated person was lending my video to yet another guy. My cr on was having a life of its own, moving from hand to hand, providing happiness along its way. I was very proud. The things frisky teens do. I ran a black market in my school. Remember Columbia House? where you could get 10 VHS movies for like $0.99. But then you had to buy like 5 more at regular price, so I did the math and figured out what the actual price per videotape was after all commitments to the club were made, and it was like $5. So I took orders from classmates, bought movies for them, and then sold it them at a slight markup. Basically, I was undercutting Suncoast. Our school had something called gold cards. They allowed you free admission to any home game or activity. These were given to honor roll students or could be purchased with your AR points. Friend of mine and I found the template on an unsecured shared folder on the school network. Got some good card stock and printed them in sheets. $20 a piece. They caught on after my buddy sold one to a notorious fuck up lol. We hit a frickin lit back in the day. Sounds exactly like my school. Accelerated reader ruined reading for me. Spicy sweet chili Doritos. This one kid would buy every single bag out of the vending machines and sell them for like double the cost. That kid's either going to Shark Tank or to prison for fraud. 
I started bringing gum to school sometime last year and giving it to the boys as when the other girls had gum they never shared with the boys. A little over a year later I'm known as the gum dealer and a majority of these boys have thanked me just for being kind to them. Read that as gum first. Will do that a relief. Gum. It says gum. Sharpened sticks. When we learnt about caveman we decided that it would have been a great idea to create our own prehistoric clan. So we smashed rocks and used them to sharpen tree branches. Some of us were particularly keen on sharpening that started to use walls as grindstones. They were able to sharpen about 6 sticks in half an hour and started exchanging them for berries during recess. Reject modernity. Return to 6th period. Probably the jocks who smuggled in food for the diabetic and hypoglycemic kids. School has seriously strict policies and wouldn't budge for medical problems. These kids were in some serious danger and administration would confiscate their food all the time. Most of the kids playing on the sports teams were placed on pedestals and protected by the administrators. They could do just about anything they wanted and they'd get away with it because they were athletes. So a lot of them would smuggle an extra food in their backpacks and pass it out to the kids who needed it. It wasn't weird, but I sold protection when kids wanted to ditch. When the school announced openings in the attendance office, I had a half dozen of my friends rush over and sign up immediately. By the end of the day, we owned it. I charged $10, $20 to ignore each truancy. Each morning, if we had clients, I'd hand a list and half of the cash to whomever was working that day. Word got around fast, but we were never caught. The dude who sold our fake IDs was really committed to his work. He made state and college licenses. Carried around two metal rings with samples of all the stuff he could make using Britney Spears shot from the Hit Me Baby One More Time album as a photo. He would also give you the id in a white envelope. I had a rush order once and he had a standard rate for that. Ended up picking it up from him at home in the other side of the city. Dude was on point. I think he ended up being an interior decorator. Nothing says Y2K like a random pick of Britney Spears in the story lol amazing. Well. It was glue to get high on. But it has a weird story behind it. The school district gives out a mandatory anonymous quiz like thing every other year. Basically, it asks you how safe you feel on campus. How close you are with the teachers. Do you need help with school work? The standard stuff to say they care when really they're only using it to slip in a question or two that they really want to know the answer of but it's under the guise that they want to know about everything. Anyway. One of the sections they just added that year was about drugs. There had been reports to them of a drug problem in our school and into others. So they asked the typical have you ever felt peer pressured into drinking beer, wine, or any alcohol type things. And one of the questions was have you ever felt the desire to inhale glue in order to feel high, or something to that effect. Everyone was so surprised at that question, and immediately after the test thing was over we had our lunch break. So what do you know everyone's trying to get their hands on the school's glue supply to see if it actually worked. And by the time our next period started, I think it's safe to say that a third of the school was high. So yeah, now there's a glue black market at that school. You can just about always find them in front of the school office too. Which I think is just asking for trouble but hey, nothing bad has happened to the kids who are doing it so. Reminds me of that South Park episode where the teacher is telling them not to choke themselves to get high, but none of them had been doing that so Kenny is just in the back trying to see if it works. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.